I'm the calculus professor and today I'll be talking to you about sequences. In problem number 19, we'd like to find the limit of the sequence, uh, the sequence 1 plus 2 over n raised to the n power. All right. Uh, and what we want to do then is really what we're trying to find is the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus 2 over n raised to the n. And what's the problem here? Uh, the problem is that if I just plug in infinity as is, 2 over n goes to uh, 0, so I get 1 plus 0, so 1, and that's raised to the infinity. And 1 raised to the infinity is an indeterminate form, so we can't just say 1 to the infinity is 1 or something. That doesn't work out. So we need to uh, work with this thing a little bit more, and I notice that I have an n up in the exponent, and that should be a key that tells me that really what I want to do is take a natural log of this thing. And what I mean by that is I don't know what this limit is, so I'm just going to call it L. All right, so let's just call that limit L, and then let's take the natural log of both sides of the equation. If I do, I get the following. I get that the natural log of L is equal to the natural log of the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus 2 to the n to the n. All right, so all that I did here is I took a natural log of both sides of the equation. Now what I need to remember is that limits can move in and outside of continuous functions. Okay, so limits can pass through continuous functions. Ln of something, that's a continuous function. So I can move that limit outside of that natural log. So let's write it that way. So I get uh, ln of L is equal to uh, the limit as n goes to infinity of ln of 1 plus 2 over n to the n. All right, so basically I switched the log and the limit because ln is a continuous function. I can do that. Now, I can, the reason that I did this in the first place is because I really don't like this n sitting up here in the exponent. And if I don't like that n in the exponent, a great way to take things out of an exponent is use the properties of log. So I'm going to take this n now and pull it out in front of my natural log. So let's do that. And I get the limit as n goes to infinity of n times ln of 1 plus 2 over n. And that's it. So I took this n, pulled it out in front of the ln, and now let's see what happens if I plug in n goes to infinity. Here I have infinity. Here, 2 over n goes to 0, so I get ln of 1. ln of 1 is 0, so I have infinity times 0. Infinity times zero is still an indeterminate form, and it's not the right kind of indeterminate form. The kinds that I like are zero over zero, or infinity over infinity, types that I can use L'Hopital's rule on. This is very, very close. The only thing that I have to do, since this is an infinity up here, if I put it down on the bottom as a one over n, it will go to zero, and that will be perfect. So let me rewrite this again. This is the limit as n goes to infinity. So this was sort of the form of infinity times zero, which isn't exactly what I want. So I'll rewrite it. Now I'll write it as ln of 1 plus 2 over n divided by 1 over n. Now let's look at that guy's form. If I plug in n as infinity, the top is ln of 1, and ln of 1 is of the form zero. 
or it's going to zero. And as n goes to infinity, one over n goes to zero. So I have something of the form zero over zero. It's indeterminate, but I can use L'Hopital's rule to evaluate it. So let's use L'Hopital's rule. So I want to take the derivative of the top of this guy and the derivative of the bottom. So I get the limit as n goes to infinity. The derivative of the top, I get the derivative of this thing over this thing. So what's the derivative of 1 plus 2 over n? I suppose it's negative 2 over n squared divided by 1 plus 2 over n. All that divided by the derivative of 1 over n, which is negative 1 over n squared. Okay. <coughs> So I need to simplify this down a little bit. To do that, let's get a common denominator here. Let's just deal with this fraction, and then we'll worry about this guy. So if I get a common denominator down here, 1 is the same as n over n. So this is n over n plus 2 over n. So let's rewrite. This is the limit as n goes to infinity of negative 2 over n squared divided by n plus 2 over n, all of that divided by negative 1 over n squared. All right, now I'm ready. Remember, uh, this is the fraction I'm dealing with first. Let's flip and multiply and try to simplify the top down a little bit. So I'll erase a little bit over here. So if I flip and multiply here, what I get is the following. This is going to be equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of negative 2 over n squared times, I flip this one and multiply it so I get times n over n plus 2, all of that divided by negative 1 over n squared. So the top is negative, the bottom is negative, I can cancel those negatives. And now I'm ready to flip and multiply this guy. When I do, it's the limit as n goes to infinity of 2 over n squared times n over n plus 2 times n squared over 1. Now some things cancel, an n squared cancels with an n squared, and what am I left with? I have the limit as n goes to infinity of 2n over n plus 2. And since the power of n on top and bottom is the same, I can just take the coefficients out in front, which is 2 over 1, or 2. So I get a limit of 2. But am I done? Not really, because I said that the natural log of L is equal to 2. So let me write that. I get ln of L is 2, which means that L must be e squared. And this is the limit that I'm actually looking for. So 2 is not the answer. 2 is the answer for the natural log of L. The answer to the problem, what is the limit? of that sequence is L is E squared, and we're done.